Hello and welcome to GameShack. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the various mini style consoles that they've been coming out with recently. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. And uh, are they worth it? Is it something that you want? Is it something you own already? Uh, I don't know. Let's take a look. This is the NES Classic Edition. I got pretty lucky when this was released and I was fourth in line at Target for the five systems that they had in stock. Being a self-proclaimed Nintendo fanboy, I was very happy to get this thing even though I have a physical copy of every game that's pre-loaded on the system. You can tell Nintendo put a lot of effort into making this thing as it looks and feels just like the original system, just shrunk down. The detail on the system is really nice. Even though the lid to the cartridge slot doesn't open, you're still going to try and lift up the door when you handle the system. The only things that are different are the controller inputs which now match the nunchuck input on the Wii. And the back has a USB jack for power and an HDMI output which gives you 720p video and it comes with both cables. The system retails for about $60 and only comes with one controller. This was a really bad choice by Nintendo. You can buy another controller for $10 but the problem is being able to find one. But what's nice is that it's the same size and feel of the original controller. Oh, and the cord for the controller is seriously about 3 feet long. Unless you're sitting at a table with a TV right in front of you, you're going to need a long HDMI cable to make up the difference. Inside the system is an R16 system on a chip and an ARM Mali 400 MP2 GPU, naturally. When you power on the system, you're greeted with some nice happy music that plays while you're selecting which one of the 30 games you want to play. Each game has the original artwork and tells you if it's a 1 or 2 player game. The list of included games is pretty strong, but there's always a few that I look at and wonder why they were included. Like Galaga and Pac-Man. Sure, they're great games in their own way, but I would have definitely picked other titles. Or how about Castlevania 2? Was that really considered a classic title? It's famous for certain reasons, such as the ability to make the player feel completely lost and hopeless at many points in the game, but I wouldn't call it a classic. Well, we all know the music is classic for sure and should be enjoyed by everyone, but why not Castlevania 3 instead? Other than that, you can't go wrong with the majority of the titles here. You have the games that you'd expect to be here like all three Super Mario Bros. titles and I'm glad they're here because they're great. But how about games like Mega Man 2? It's probably the best game in the series. There's also Super C. The original Contra might have been a better choice, but Super C is also a great entry. Or maybe some Ninja Gaiden. <laughs> yes please, it's such a great game. I'm glad that Gradius was included, or Gradius to some people. It's definitely impressive graphically and still a fun game to play. Basically every genre has a game included here. Even sports games are covered with the greatest sports title on the system, Tecmo Bowl. One of the best features here is that you can quit a game at any time and create a save state. So like if you have to drop a major poo in another town, just create a save and when you're done just come back later and start off exactly where you left off. You have a few display options to choose from which might enhance your gameplay. There's a CRT option which adds scan lines and changes the color of the display to emulate a CRT. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this one though. There's a 4x3 option which puts the game in its original aspect ratio, but this mode has slight shimmering artifacts during horizontal scrolling due to the non-square pixels. And finally, there's a pixel perfect option which displays the game with square pixels. This doesn't have any shimmering, but as you can see it feels a bit too skinny. So no matter which mode you choose, there's going to be trade-offs. You can scan a QR code with your phone which will take you to Nintendo of Japan's website and let you read the instruction manuals for every game here. You can also hack the system and add your own games just as long as it all fits within the 512 megabytes of space that's on the unit. I also bought the Famicom Mini. Yeah, I know you're wondering why I'd do something stupid like that, so let me tell you why. Well, firstly, because it looks really cool. Secondly, it comes with two tiny controllers that are attached to the unit itself. Just like the real thing. Thirdly, there's a handful of games that are here that aren't on the US release. There's Yi'ar Kung Fu, which isn't fun at all. Atlantis No Nazo, which also isn't fun. River City Ransom, which is definitely fun. Solomon's Key, which is an entertaining puzzler. Bumping Sumo, which is surprisingly better than I thought it would be. And probably the sleeper hit is Downtown Niketsu March Soryuke. I don't know how to explain this game other than that you're in a race and you do whatever you have to do to reach the finish line in first place. A great idea for a game and why didn't it get released in the US? The only bad thing about this system is it doesn't come with an AC adapter so you'll have to use the one from your NES or SNES Classic or plug it into a random USB slot somewhere. Anyway, both are worthy purchases and I'm glad I have them.
All right, Dave, the NES Classic is cool. I can mm -hmm. see why people really love this thing, yeah. but what I don't like is the way Nintendo handled the release of it. Yeah, of course. That was just <laughs> crazy on their part of not having enough systems out there. I'd like to give them the benefit of the doubt that they just didn't think it was going to be worth it. And uh, Oh, I know. I think they knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> I, I'm probably going to have to agree with that because, yeah, they just wanted to build up high demand, and they did that. Indeed. So let's get back to another mini system. This is the Neo Geo Mini from SNK. It was released in the latter half of 2018 and includes 40 built-in games to play. In fact, it's quite a good selection of games for the most part. A bit more on that later. The system comes with a USB cable for power, but you'll need to provide your own mini HDMI cable if you want to play it that way. The unit itself is cool, it's shaped like a miniature arcade cabinet. It even comes with marquee stickers that you can attach if you want. What's more is that you can even play the games on the little screen. Though, sadly, the system doesn't have a battery, so it's not truly portable. And I've got to say, the games actually look fairly good on this little screen. The sound is a bit tinny through the built-in speaker, but you can attach headphones or a line-out cable if you'd like. The controls, however, suck. The joystick has a very large amount of travel, which makes it feel slow, and there are no micro switches. The action buttons are laid out as A, C, B, D, in that order, and it's just awful. In fact, when I first saw pictures of this back when it was announced, I knew it would be bad, but nobody could comprehend what I was talking about when I mentioned it to them. Here's the deal. Gamers are used to the jump button being to the right of the action button. I mean, it's just one of those universal things. But on this, the jump button is to the left of the action button, and it just isn't right. I don't know what they were thinking or why they did it this way. However, you can buy a separate controller and attach it to the system. This is modeled after the Neo Geo CD controller with two distinct differences. First and foremost is that the joystick thingy no longer has any micro switches like the original does and it has a very long travel distance making it feel slow, just like the joystick on the unit itself. Secondly, they changed the button layout compared to the original. And honestly, in my opinion, this is a huge improvement over the original Neo Geo CD controller. The jump button is now lower than the action button on your thumb, just like holding a Super Nintendo controller. So using this to play the Neo Geo Mini makes a big difference. Although it'll never feel quite perfect, you do eventually get used to the weird non-microswitched pad. Anyway, you can hook this system up to your TV via HDMI and it displays in glorious 720p. And I've gotta say, the video quality kinda sucks. It's like they blurred it a bunch and then put a sharpening filter on that and cranked it all the way up. It's bad. Here's how Metal Slug 5 looks on a real Neo Geo playing an RGB through the Frame Meister. And here's how it looks on the Neo Geo Mini. Mmm, looks so delicious. There are a few different modes you can choose for video, but they all look awful. And they don't give you an option for clean pixels, nor do they give you any scanline or CRT style filters. But how does it compare to the Switch that came before the Switch, aka the Neo Geo X? Well, the Neo Geo X only outputs in 480p, has tons of screen tearing, the sound isn't even in sync, and only has a small selection of games, so the Neo Geo Mini is better in pretty much every regard. However, the Neo Geo X has a cool micro switch joystick that's pretty nice. Fortunately, the Mini doesn't seem to use a stolen emulator like the Neo Geo X did, and whatever they're using here runs much better. Like I said before, there are 40 games to play here. We're looking at the international version, which has fewer one-on-one -on -one fighting games and more metal slugs. I'm kinda disappointed that they went with top player golf instead of Neo Turf Masters. Actually, I'm quite disappointed. You should be too. I am impressed though that they included Sengoku 3, which is pretty good. Other great games included are Mark of the Wolves, which is possibly the best fighting game on the platform, Last Blade 2, which is a nice weapons-based fighter, and the original Shock Troopers, which never got an official home release on the real system. I've already talked about the controls and the visuals. Well, how about the sound? It's hit and miss. It's decently faithful to the original games, but certain games are way too loud and overmodulated, especially the Metal Slugs. They're so loud that you'll be hearing quite a bit of distortion. Okay. Again, I recommend using the external controller to play the games here. I was even able to do the special moves in the fighting games, though it did feel kind of weird sometimes. It should also be noted that most of the games on here, including all of the Metal Slugs, are the censored versions with gray sweat instead of red blood. Though, curiously, there is red vomit in Metal Slug 3. However, some games like Samurai Showdown 5 have red blood. 
but Samurai Showdown 2 doesn't. You get green blood. If you press start and select simultaneously, you'll be taken to a menu where you can change things like the screen stuff, exit the game, and most importantly, save your game. You can save anywhere during the game. Exit out, come back later, reload, and you'll start from the very same frame that you left off on. Overall, there's plenty of games here and enough variety to keep you busy for a while. Unfortunately, there's no way to add more games at the time we're making this video. Who knows what the future holds though? You also can't update the firmware, which means they can't fix the bad video and sound quality of this thing. That really is too bad. At over $100 currently, we really can't recommend this one unless you're not bothered by the video, sound, and control issues somehow. Keep trying, SNK. Maybe one of these days you'll get it right. That Neo Geo is actually kind of impressive. I didn't think the screen would be that great on that little thing, and it's actually pretty darn good. Yeah, the little screen is actually really nice. Yeah, too bad it's when you output it to a TV, it's not nearly as good. Yeah. Oh well. What are you going to do? Well, what we are going to do is take a look at the SNES Mini. Here's the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Everything about it looks like the original system, from the color to the writing to the little LED light right in front. One thing I like is that the controller ports have a cover to look exactly like the SNES controller ports. Once you open that cover, you see the actual ports for the controllers. Of course the back is going to look different, and now has a jack for the USB power and the obligatory 720p HDMI output. The system comes with an HDMI cable and a USB cable with the plug adapter. The controllers are the same size and feel exactly like the originals, which is awesome. The cords for the controller are longer than those on the NES Classic, but still shorter than the real deal. At least it comes with two controllers this time though. When you turn the system on, you're greeted with the same style of upbeat music that Nintendo is known for on their later generation of consoles. It's so nice, it just makes you want to play games. And boy does this system have games. 21 games in all and there's something for everyone. Nintendo didn't hold back and put lots of heavy hitters on here. Yoshi's Island, Mario Kart, Super Metroid, Kirby Superstar, and Zelda just to name a few. They even went all crazy and put Earthbound on it. Collectors hoping that their copy of the game would let them retire in a small mansion in Southern California are probably completely pissed. Everyone else who simply just wanted to play it were ecstatic and rightly so because it's an excellent game. They even included the unreleased Star Fox 2. This game was completely developed and then ditched to put all resources on the N64 title. And let me tell you, it's a quality game that's very enjoyable and I'm happy it finally got an official release. But to unlock it, you have to beat the first level on Star Fox 1. No big deal since you're probably going to be playing more than that anyways. Then you have amazing games from third-party developers like Contra 3 and my favorite Super Nintendo game of all time, Super Castlevania 4 from Konami. From Capcom, you have Mega Man X and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. There's so much good stuff on the system, how could anybody be sad at what they see? The internal hardware is exactly the same as the NES Classic with the same cores, GPUs, and Linuxes. But you may ask, Dave, how do the games play? Are they glitchy and stretched and stuff? Well, let me tell you, they're just fine and I've had no problems with any of the titles that I've played on this system. Just like the NES Classic, you have the same three display options for your viewing pleasure. Unlike the NES Classic though, you have a handful of different borders you can put around the screen. Anything from an old stereo speaker setup to a city skyline to the much preferred solid black. Another new feature that I found interesting is the rewind feature. Say, for example, you're playing Donkey Kong Country and you're on the minecarts. You see some bananas that are hanging low, but you want to try to collect them anyway. You try to get them, but instead fall to your death. It's not a big deal because you can use the rewind feature to go back to a point before where you died and with the touch of a button you start playing again from that point. And look, this time around you get those damn bananas and stay alive! And of course, the save states are here as well. And lastly, you can scan a QR code into your phone and pull up any of the instruction manuals from each game. These are basically scans of the actual manual, which I think is cool since it has all the original artwork that you'd find while flipping through the pages. Out of all these retro systems, this is my favorite, and the quality of titles included makes it worth the $80 purchase price. And in 15 years, if it yellows like my SNES, I'll be even happier. You can hack it to add more games like the NES Classic, but it's more restrictive due to the types of helper chips that some games have. 
And why not complement my SNES Classic Edition with the Super Famicom Classic Edition? It looks and feels amazing like Nintendo's other classic consoles and again has a handful of different titles that weren't included on the US release. You have Super Formation Soccer which might be fun if you wanted to spend some time with it. There's also the puzzle game Panel de Pan or as we know it here Tetris Attack. Then you have Fire Emblem which is cool. It's naturally all in Japanese but if you've played other games in the series you can find your way around. And my favorite is Goemon which is a very fun platformer from Konami. These games aren't a selling point for most people but for collectors it's cool to have the system as a showpiece in their collections. Alright, again, the SNES Classic is a really good thing, but only mm -hmm. 21 games compared to 30 on the NES? What the hell, Dave? I what know. the hell? <laughs> hey, you're asking the wrong guy. You gotta ask Nintendo what the hell. But oh. of those games, those are like, 20 of them are awesome freaking games, so... Yeah, that, that, that 21th? That 21th game was horrible. I mean, I would've picked something else. What is your 21th game? <laughs> I don't know, what was it? Uh... Secret of Mana. I would have probably put something else in there. Oh, I think people like Secret of Mana. I, I'm sure they do, but this is just personally me. Saying yeah, that, okay, so. okay. Let's get to something a little interesting for us. Okay. This is the C64 Mini from Retro Games Limited. Not the Commodore 64 Mini, the C64 Mini. This comes with a little C64, an ancient style USB joystick, a USB cable for power, and an HDMI cable which gives you 720p video. This currently retails for around $70 or so and includes 64 built-in games. I like the menu screen as it gives you a screenshot of the game, a little bit of information about it, as well as the name of the programmers and the musician who worked on it. The games run on an emulator called X64 from Vice 2.4. I've got to be straight with you guys, I have absolutely no nostalgia for the Commodore 64 and I've never used one or played any of the games until now, so please be aware of this during the review. Anyway, the included joystick is horrible, just awful. It's actually worse than an Atari 2600 joystick. There's really no comfortable way to use it. You can't plug in other USB controllers either, at least not any that I personally own. But more on that in a bit. Playing some of these games is more of a chore than anything, especially with this joystick. You just can't be precise at all, which makes many of the games very unenjoyable. Some games though, like Chips Challenge, are playable even with a clumsy joystick. Basically, you run around, collect all the chips, avoid the traps, and make your way to the exit. The stages get cooler and cooler as they go on. There's a version of Basic on here, but since the keyboard on the unit itself unfortunately isn't real, you'll have to hook up a USB keyboard or use the virtual on-screen keyboard. And speaking of that, a lot of games require the use of a keyboard before you begin playing, so you'll have to enable that virtual keyboard there as well. There's some loading here, and depending on the game, it can be kind of slow. There are a few different display modes, and the CRT options have the faintest scan lines you ever did see. There's also two different 4x3 modes, because 4x3 is a different shape in Europe, I guess. Actually, that makes sense though, since the Commodore 64 hooked up to regular TVs instead of computer monitors. So the slower PAL sets would display it a bit wider due to the slightly higher resolution of their screens. As for me, I just stuck with pixel perfect mode. I'm glad that they give you these aspect ratio options. The sound seems fine and the SID chip sounds like the SID. It's an acquired taste, I can see why people like it. The good news is that if you upgrade the firmware, which is really easy to do, you can play pretty much any game you want if you load it from a connected USB drive. Like Ghosts and Goblins here, which is absolutely horrible on this system. You have to press up to jump despite the joystick having like 90 buttons. They even changed the music for some incomprehensible reason, but they did that a lot back in the day. Oh, and most ROMs I find have useless headers and trainers on them. I guess they figured that everyone wants to cheat. It really makes these games a pain in the ass to start though. And I'm glad that the days of headers and trainers for ROMs are gone. At least I thought they were. 
Because of this, most games will want copious amounts of information input via the keyboard before you begin. With only two USB ports and both of them occupied, you might have to swap between the keyboard and joystick, use an active USB hub, or resort to the virtual keyboard more than you'd like. Still, the ability to play most ROMs does make this device a lot better, even if it is a hassle sometimes. Another important thing that the firmware update did for me is allowing me to use my USB Saturn pad. And wow, now I can do marginally better than I could before. Anyway, unless you have hardcore nostalgia for the Commodore 64 or just old computers in general, I really can't recommend it. If you're unfamiliar with the platform, this isn't going to get you to love it. If you do like the C64 though, then this is actually a pretty cool little thing. All right, that C64 Mini is definitely interesting. It's probably nothing I personally would want to own, even though I do really like these mini consoles. But uh, I can see how people like it and would want to buy it. Yeah, like I said, if you're into the Commodore 64, it's absolutely mm -hmm. worth checking out. Yeah. Anyway, let's finish this up. Here's the PlayStation Classic from Sony. I reluctantly bought this one knowing full well the issues it has. Even when I was at the cash register at Target, the dude behind the counter was looking at me like, are you sure you want to spend a hundred bucks on this turd? But being the good employee that he is, he let me make my own mistake. Inside the box you get the console and two controllers, which helps the pain just a little bit. There's also an HDMI cable for 720p output and a USB power cable, but there's no AC adapter for that power cable. And you need that power adapter to run this thing as you can't just plug it into a random USB port like you can with the Nintendo Classic systems. At the stiff price tag, it should have come with one. Anyway, the console itself looks amazing. It's truly a miniaturized PlayStation and not a single detail is missing. I almost wish there was one tiny little memory card sticking out of the left slot for a more authentic feel. The controllers are USB and are the original model and not the DualShock ones. It would have been nice to have analog controllers since some of the games included are compatible and play better with it. But anyway, the controllers feel great and look exactly like a real controller connector is plugged in and not a USB controller. Internally, the system is powered by an entry-level ARM Cortex-A35 quad-core with an integrated PowerVR GE8300 GPU. Let's move on to the games. The system includes 20 so-called classic titles. And honestly, I can only count 7 games on here that I'd call classic, and even these have issues that make you question them. For example, as many of you know, I love Jumping Flash. It's a great first-person platformer that's loads of fun to play. And last time I checked, I still live in the USA which follows the NTSC standard. So why in the hell is the PAL version of Jumping Flash on here? This sucks because the game is slightly slower than what I'm used to. But I did manage to find one single thing positive about the PAL version. It has extra cutscenes that the NTSC version doesn't have. This isn't the only PAL game on here, oh no. The other games that are PAL are Battle Arena Tashinden, Cool Borders 2, Destruction Derby, Grand Theft Auto, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, Resident Evil, Tekken 3, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Cheese, Sony! Nearly half the games on here are PAL. Anyway, other good games on here include Metal Gear Solid, which will always be a classic. Final Fantasy VII, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit back in the day. Rayman, which is still an awesome 2D platformer. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo is a great puzzle game with your favorite Street Fighter characters and it's loads of fun to play in multiplayer. And Ridge Racer Type 4 is a quality racing game with an excellent soundtrack, though you obviously can't use analog controls with it here. Or how about Resident Evil Director's Cut? I love the B-movie quality live action scenes. A lot of people like Tekken 3 and it's a good choice for the system. I'd prefer it at the proper speed though, but maybe that's just me. The rest of the games are just mediocre at best. Does anyone really have fond memories of Battle Arena Toshinden? Or how about Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six? Or even the original Grand Theft Auto? I have no fond memories of that and I'm definitely not creating new ones now. If you really wanted to make this thing attractive, why not put in Crash Bandicoot or Tomb Raider or Tony Hawk or even Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Unless you're a hand-drawn 2D game on the system, your graphics haven't aged well. The polygons of the time were not smooth with lots of rough edges. The games upscaled to a modern resolution are even more jaggy and rough looking than ever. You'd think that Sony would have given you some display options to help smooth things out a little bit. Maybe a scanline filter to help recreate a CRT probably would have helped. 
In the settings menu for the system, you'll find no such thing. I honestly wonder why the settings menu is even here. The menu system for the games is decent. All the games are displayed on a wheel and you can see the cover art for all the titles at any time. Each game has its own memory card for saves and one spot for save states. The menu system has no music, so besides your button pushes, it's just dead silence. There's no cheery feeling like when you're playing one of Nintendo's classic systems. It's just there existing and no more. I can't believe that Sony thought this thing was worth $100. Besides the design of the system itself, they put absolutely no effort into the final product and it shows. As of this video, barely anyone has purchased one of these and they're being sold for only $25 at some locations, maybe even less by now. Also, some people are working on hacking this and they've been able to change the PAL games to run in NTSC and they run fine. So why are PAL games even on here in the first place? It just makes no sense. I really hope this stings Sony. And if they decide to pursue a PS2 classic, follow Nintendo's lead and do the right thing. Geez, Dave. Nine of the games are PAL. Mm -hmm. No Dual Shock for especially the games that use it, like Metal Gear and right. Ridge Racer 4. Mm -hmm. A very questionable list of included mm -hmm. games. I mean, what the hell was Sony thinking? Yeah, Sony put absolutely no effort into this, and it shows, and it's... Definitely a cash grab. Yeah, cash grab has pissed a lot of people off, me included. Um, I hope you didn't buy one, and now you don't need to. Exactly, and it hurts me to say this, but it, it definitely feels like Nintendo, other than the way they're handling the release of these mm -hmm. systems, are the only ones that are doing it right. Yeah, they're, they're putting a lot of love in their systems. I mean, right down to the menus, to screensavers and all that stuff. I mean, they thought it through. Indeed. They did a good job. Anyway, what do you guys think of these menu systems? Let us know, and in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. What the hell are you doing? Joe, I am so excited about the upcoming Game Boy Classic that I made a mock-up of it, and I'm playing Tetris on it. <laughs> I'm doing really good. Well, Dave, why play this when you can play the ginormous NES Wood Carved Edition? It's all built into the controller. Let's play some Mega Man. You take care of the jump and action buttons. I take care of the D-pad. Let's go. All right, I'll try it. This isn't working, Joe. I, I can't play this. <sighs> but this is more like it.